Hi guys. Um, kind of a bonus thing for you. Um, I've decided that there's going to be the occasion where um, I can't get to the daily pattern on the right day. I just, I, I know that I'm going to encounter that along the way. And so um, I've decided to do some non-daily pattern things. Just some drawing for my own. Um, in the in the group, in the Facebook group, um, the Tangle It Pattern Club group, we're working on these what's called go-to pattern uh, tangles. And first thing we had to do was make a list of our go-tos. And I just quickly wrote down the ones that popped into my head. These aren't the only tangles I have in my head. There are lots more. But I just wanted, you know, they said try to keep it less than 10. Um, what did I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I did 9. Um, are the ones that just came to me as I was sitting there that day. Tipple, Sand Swirl, Mooka, Fescue, Printemps, uh, Diva Dance, Ripped Green, Flux, and Poke Root were the ones that just sort of stood out to me that at that moment. And then we started doing... Um, Let's see, do I have it with me? Then we started doing these uh, challenges where she gave us a string. Hang on a second. I gotta find find my pages here. These ones. These ones. Okay. I gotta get myself organized. So she gave us a uh, a string to use every day. So we had seven different strings and we were to incorporate a particular pattern that she gave us which the first week was Shatuck um, which is this pattern here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Which is this pattern here. Incorporate that with some of our um, go-to tangles. The ones that from our list. And so, um, you know, here's some, some Shatuck with some Tipple and some Diva Dance, right? And then um, here's one with Shatuck done in a different way here and here and um, a little bit of Mooka and some Fescue, right? And then this one, let's see, oh, it's living this way. Sometimes I can't tell which way the, the tile is living, except for I have to see where I put my signature. The signature's right side up. So I just filled the whole space with these uh, sh Shatuck pieces here. And then I put a little fescue and some flux in there. And then this one, there's the Shatuck with added stripes to it and a little bit of tipple and then this one there it is in in the stripes behind and I used some flux on some sort of a, like a rope like thing oops you can't quite see the whole thing and then this one I did it let's see oh it's living this way did the shatuck here with some poke root. So um, that was week one. And I haven't actually even taken pictures of these and posted them on the group site yet. Um, just because I've been so dang busy for the last three weeks that I just haven't had time. Um, the, the next week, week two, we were given um, to use rope, ropes, ropas, R-O-P-U-Z. The one that kind of looks like a ropey mushroom thing. Um, as our challenge uh, pattern. And incorporate it with some of our other stuff. See, I put some sand swirls, some, some fescue in there. Here's one where I put just a simple one with some ripped screen. Um, 
there I didn't use the little mushroom part. I just used the, the they call it ropes fill. Just a pattern to fill in a space and some poke root. Um, let's see, next one. That one. And this one, I started out with that ropes fill, but I don't, because I ended up with them in the corner, they really don't look like ropes. So it doesn't look the same as like that one. But it's okay, it's, when, it's what happened, right? And then there's one more, is that all of them? That's all that I have with me, okay. Okay, so that was the challenge, the next challenge. And then this next week, oh, there was this one. Let me show you that one. It's on the back side of that one. Okay, and then the next challenge is we're up to um, challenge week four. Sorry, I'm kind of a little discombobulated here. We're up to week four. Week three is um called pattern play and with pattern play we have these these different strings see I've, i drew out the string i was drawing these strings in the car but it's okay because it was pencil but they are way wonky because we were driving in the car but i know that you know sort of a teardroppy shape three little sort of teardrop shapes in the in the square and like this one um square and and three circles of graduating sizes um this one kind of this was supposed to be a kind of a wonky the squares like that um here's another of the of the strings we were given so we're given these strings and we have to kind of incorporate and with pattern play the thing we were supposed to do is pick a pattern and just play with it in different ways. Just one pattern or adding with your, um, with your go-tos. So I'm working on, um, Hullaba. I chose Hullaba. So I used Hullaba and, and made it look kind of like a coral for this one, which I really am happy with. This one I'm not done with. I started this one, just a standard kind of hollow bob, but they're all curved. Um, and that's what I'm working on with pattern play. And then I did start doing the next week also because um, the following week, week four, was Paradox. And Paradox is one of my favorites, absolute favorites. So I started playing with Paradox, doing some different things that I'd never done before. Um, this one, the, uh, the string had this sort of uh, spiral, two spirals in the corner. So I played with that. And then um, there's that one with the teardrops. Right. And then this one was more of a, almost a standard type paradox, but the um, string I started and I, I fully inked the string and then I filled in around. And so because the string had some interesting shapes to it, it actually had this, this square up here in the corner. And then it had a round bit down here. And be, oh, it's right here. I actually shaded the string so I could find it. So it, because of that, it has this round movement in this corner and square in this corner. I really like this tile. This one's become really one of my favorites. And then um, I did this one with wonky lines. Isn't that cool? When you do Paradox with a wonky line? I'd never tried that before, but wow, I really like it. So I'm playing with those things. Um, so I kind of skipped ahead. Uh, I haven't gotten all of my ones that I chose Hullaba for, and I still have a bunch of Paradox to finish. And so what I thought I would do is every so often, I will come on here and I will just draw 
part of these. And <clears throat> you will not see all of them. You'll see some of them. You may only see one or two. I don't know. It just depends on how I feel, how much time I have to draw um, while sitting here. Um, these are the tiles that I had cut up and I put in my, um, excuse me, my little CD case and so I can take them with me. Uh, matter of fact, I need to cut a few more tiles. I only have one left. But, um, yeah, they're going to be my on-the-go sort of things to do real quick. I can pull them out, work on them, put them away. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just show you some as I'm drawing. And they'll be like a bonus video. And you'll see them whenever you see them. And they may pop up in between. They'll, they'll likely show up on Mondays because that, unless something changes, that appears to be the day that's going to be the hardest for me to get a video out. Um, so I may do a couple ahead and then, you know, you might, pop, you might see one on a Monday so that I have time to, to then catch up later in the week. And um, get, I will still get all seven of the daily patterns in. They just might not be on seven consecutive days. So you may end up getting two in one day later on in the week. Just so you know. Not that it makes any difference. You guys don't really have any control or choice out of it. Out of it. But I've been trying to be really transparent at what I have planned for um, my drawings. Because... Um, I've been watching other YouTubers and I have found that the ones who tell me what's coming next or tell me why they're doing what they're doing, um, I appreciate that more. Uh, I, I'm watching a lady who does a lot of flow painting. I should just draw here while I'm sitting here yammering. Um, let me finish this while... <coughs> Excuse me. Finish this one while we're talking. Um, you know, I've been watching her, and she's she, gosh, she she puts out a lot of videos, and and that's good. Um, there are sometimes she's putting out two or three, sometimes even four videos a day. She's putting out a lot of videos, and they're not short. You know, they're they're full long process videos of her painting and, and what she's doing. And, um, but when she says, you know, I'm not going to do, you got three videos today because the next two days I'm busy and I won't be doing a video. And, and she's honest and straightforward with that. And I appreciate it because, you know, she's been doing so many videos that if she didn't put one out, we'd all start to worry. Well, where the heck is Anne Marie? Where'd she go? But, you know, she straight up says, you know, I, I'm not going to have time to do a video tomorrow. So, um, or even in two days, she's, if she's going to go on holiday or she has, she's going to go to work or whatever it is that's going on in her life that, that she can't do a video. And I appreciate that. Um, others are very sporadic. And those are the people who I find, um have a hard time with keeping subscribers to their to their YouTube channel. I keep them. I, I remain subscribed to them. But I've kind of stopped watching a lot of their stuff, even when they put it on, because it's like, well, that's great. But then when's the next one going to be? Is it going to be tomorrow? Is it going to be next week? Is it going to be two months from now? You know, I... I I'm less invested in what they're doing because I don't know when they're going to do it again. And so I feel like I've committed to a daily drawing. I have. That's, that's how I started out my channel, and I've committed to that. And so I want to make sure that even if I'm not doing the daily pattern, that you get a daily drawing. And because I 
chose that as my commitment to myself and now to you guys because golly who would have thought when I started this channel I thought okay like 10 people are gonna watch right and holy guacamole I have over 3,000 I, I can't believe it that's that's just crazy just crazy uh, matter of fact it might be more than that at this point who knows because I don't know when this is going to go up it's going to go up whenever I don't have content for you so it could be a couple of weeks before you even see this from the time I record it but anyway I know it's over 3,500 because I've already done the 3,500 subscriber giveaway so I might be over 4,000 uh, you know I have no idea that that was going to happen. Really didn't. Um, but I think part of it has to do with this art form that is so relaxing and so accessible to everyone. You know, not everyone can paint. Well, okay, I take that back. I feel like everyone can do art if they want any kind of art. They just have to practice at it. However, not everyone has access to supplies to paint. Not everyone has access to the supplies for, you know, oils or watercolors or, or acrylics. But almost everyone have access to the supplies to do this because you where where I recommend that we do get a nice pen and use um, paper that you uh, appreciate and that you enjoy working on, you can grab a pen out of your drawer at the office, any old pen will do, and you can just draw on a piece of post-it note or a piece of envelope out of the trash you can uh, do it in pencil. You can do it in crayon. You can do it in with, if, if you have a tool that can make a mark and you have some place to make a mark on, you can do this type of art. And so I find that this is more accessible to more people than some of the other art forms. Okay, let's see. I like that. I like that with the dark in the back. I want to erase my string. This is week three, string number two under pattern play. Just so you know, I'll eventually get these up in the group. So if you want to see these um, pattern play or the um, go-to pattern uh, stuff that other people are doing um, just go over to the group on Facebook which is Tanglet Pattern Club um, and under the pinned post there's all the information about the different challenges that are going on and the daily tangles and the go-to pattern challenges what what Ina's trying to do is get us so that we, you know, take patterns, play with them, and make them part of our daily, um, our go-to patterns so that we have more patterns in our head. And not only do we have the pattern in our head, but we have all sorts of variations of the pattern in our head so that it, we can change it up without having to think about it really hard. You know, a lot of us know how to do halibah. Halibah is, you know, like, especially when it's straight, it's like drawing pickup sticks, right? Um, when I've got this curvy thing, it looks kind of like um, freeway overpasses, you know, roads overlapping one another. Um, any Anything with this overlap is, is halibah. Um, but you can play with it with different shapes like I did with that other one that one looks like coral 
I don't know where, really where that came from, but I was sitting at church and we were having the just best, uh, where'd it go? I've already lost it. Well, it doesn't take me long to lose stuff. I've set it down here in this pile somewhere. Where'd it go? Well, I couldn't have gone that far. They're all together here. Maybe they're in the back of one of these. Ah, it's on the back of the one I'm doing. Well, that would be why I can't find it. Um, this one. I just started drawing. Um, this was the string. This kind of five-pointed thing. And I just started drawing around it. And I decided, well, I'll let me make it look more like a branch. But it didn't really look like a branch. And so then I added these holes in it and it looked more like coral and... And I decided, well, I need something in the background. I'm just going to put stripes. I, I just, it just kind of grew out of this energy that was happening while I was at church. We were having this absolutely delightful gospel choir from Azusa Pacific University. They had come to our church to sing for us. And the energy in the room was amazing. There were like... I don't know, between 25 and 30 college students um, and their band. And so we had musical instruments, some um, guitar, drum, uh, played the piano. We had uh, all these singers and the, the, they were just rocking the house, let me tell you. So um, it just came out. And that's the best thing, is when you have these kinds of patterns in your head where you know how to do the pattern, but then the creation of, of playing with the pattern can just kind of come out and just surprise you with what comes out of your pen. Because I really wasn't paying a whole lot of attention, to be honest, of what I was drawing. I was paying more attention to what I was listening to. And it just, yeah, so much fun, right? I think I want a bit of in here. I want these to go under my edge of my tile. So I'm going to shade that too. Okay. So when I do these, these the, like bonus videos, you may or may not see an entire tang, tile like this one. You, you're only seeing it finishing. And I'll, let me see what time it is. I have time. I'll probably draw one more today that I can, you know, stick up there sometime as a filler and that one you might see the whole process but I just wanted to let you know what it was I was doing and why I was doing it this one there we go that's my my pattern play for Hullaba there we go that that's it. I'm going to um, turn off the video. I'm going to grab another string for the pattern play or the paradox, either one, whichever one feels like it wants to be heard today. And I'm going to play with it. Maybe the paradox. Anyway, I will see you on the flip side. Um, you guys have a great day. I have, like I said, I have no idea when this is going to actually air. It's going to be just stuck in somewhere. So, uh, yeah. I will see you sometime in the next year. You guys have a great day. Bye.